Hey everyone, I've pulled off the coil part of the motor from the washing machine. The magnets are here inside there. We don't need that right now. But I've got to rewire it because it's three phase, as you can see by the three terminals here. Right now it's putting out about uh, probably 50 volts by hand and that's way too much once I spin it up to proper speed. So I'm going to remove these chips here. I think they're just sensors and get wiring. So I've just given it a bit of a clean all around in here and I've noticed there are some pretty sizable cracks. So I'm just going to go ahead and super glue those now. We're going to split this into seven groups of poles, so that means two each. And there's three phases, so six all in one. Okay, so I've cut the first three, and that's given us three wires here, three wires there. I'm going to go around and label them all so I don't get confused later. Just A, B, and C. So I've just counted out the seven different segments. Each one's going to have six coils in between. Boy, this is a bit scary, cutting up a perfectly good motor. So I've cut the first three. Now where a gap is right here, the next three wires coming out of the right side of the coil, they're going to be your supply line, so they're going to connect up to the main one. And the next three coming out of the left are going to all join together in star configuration. So we'll take from the left side of here, from A, follow it to the next A, and it's already connected. So that can stay there. The other one coming out of there, so on the right side, we'll cut that and loop it around. From A to A, and then the outcoming wire And B to B in the outcoming wire. And then C to C. Oh boy, that one's hard to get to. So these will be our three live connections. And these three, we're just going to tie them together like this and then continue around seven more times. It's very easy to cut the wrong wire. In fact, I just did it right here. So I've put a little X, so I have to fix that. I readed my markings. Basically, the thick blue lines is everywhere where there's going to be a break for the second lot of coils and there's never going to be any wires crossing where that is. The blue one is, the smaller one is the middle and that's where you're just going to have the most amount of wires. So here we've still got three wires there and if we look at a unchanged one, there's still three wires there. And basically there's going to be no wires where there's a big blue line as you can see here. We come to C, follow it along to the next C find the wire that's coming out of it and cross-reference it to the big blue line where there's supposed to be no wires so there's one left obviously we're going to cut that wire it's right down in there so I like to get a screwdriver and then cut it on the screwdriver fold it back and fold this one forwards I've just finished soldering and holy crap there's a lot there and I'm not very good at it so I got a little flux pen 
So I've been I've been making the connection, wrapping the wire around, then adding flux, heating it up with the tip, and then introducing some of this rosin core solder. And then you want it to melt around and still be able to see the wire through it there. Um, these big connections are horrible. Hopefully you can do better than I did. <laughs> and then just connecting all of these neutrals together here. And so basically there's three wires. There's the A wire, B wire, and the C wire. And they will, this one's going to connect to every C. Come around to here and it's connected to the C. We can check that all our connections are fine by putting the meter to ohms and testing between each phase. I've got 0.7 on that one, 0.7 on that one, and 0.7. Yes, I mustn't have messed up too badly.